Today is February 1st, and we're talking Yanks. A lot of little bullet points that might become big ones. Let's do it. Talking Yanks with old John Boyd. John Boyd Jake. Recaps galore. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake, BBD in the corner. Episode is brought to you by Seat Geek, where you can use code Yanks for $20 off your first purchase at Seat Geek on the website or the app. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code Yanks. Click the link in the description, download the app. I was on the app recently, Jake, just looking at events coming up at all venues locally in the area. I found out the circus is coming to town mm-hmm. and the Globe trotters, and I thought my son might enjoy both of those, but will he sit still for that long? I don't know. But if you have kids that are a little older, the circus is coming to town, and they don't hurt animals anymore. So you can get tickets on SeatGeek to that with code Yanks. Get you twenty dollars off your first purchase. How you doing, Jake? Two baseball man. Thank you, SeatGeek. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. A little. Uh... <clears throat> Post game from Booney times, the fact that the, I was going to say the map, we call that, the map for the year is a calendar. Uh, the calendar says February 1st. That means, I mean, two weeks out from pitchers and catchers. That means we're really in the teeth of it. Uh, so excited. We, uh, we might have some spring training news coming for the people. Um, and hopefully the Yankees have some spring training news for us. And we we've dove into some of... Booney's quotes, because uh, that's some news right there. And, like, Wandy, people were kind of penciling in, and he's officially out, so that's sad. I was confused at the people penciling him in. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that. I wasn't penciling in. Thought he had a chance to come back. Not anymore. I thought he was a Met. Good you one. thought it was you were penciling him into the Mets? I was, yeah. And, and he's once, not there either. Once you're a Met, you're a Met. Mm. Yeah. I was at least 60-40 not coming back. The event was awesome, though. Thank you, everyone, that came out. That was really cool. Uh, appreciate it. Got to say hi to a ton of people. I love putting faces to names that we know. And I love seeing our regulars that come to a lot of our events. So it's been a while. Our first time doing a live Talking Yanks since 2019, was that? Or is that 2020 when we had uh, Talkman and Hoke mm. live oh, in like Tampa? Like interview. Yeah, like, like a, we've done live watch parties. Those are... We did post episodes at those, but... Yes, but, like, this was, you know, the main event was the podcast, not watching a game together and all that. So, it was awesome. I thought it was cool. Everyone is great. Uh, well, in the interview, there was one guy that came in hot, and he came in hot. And I liked it. I mean, I didn't fully... It was I, New York. He asked a great question by using a bad example, I think, in my opinion. Scott Proctor... Yes, is known, and if you haven't listened to the episode, he talked about how much Joe... I, Joe Torrey was known for abusing probably. relievers. Like, he ruined t- Scott Proctor's career. Yeah. Like, that is known as a bad talking point. Like, oh, the only downside of Torrey's management is he would burn out relievers. And uh, there was a, the one of the original Yankee blogs was scottproctorsarm.com. Hmm. On the other, the other irony of it was... The Yankees didn't win with Scott Proctor. Yeah. He's been a part of zero World Series oh, teams. Oh, four I, through oh seven. For those of you that only listened to the episode weren't there, I believe the Scott Proctor banter was not in the episode that was posted because that guy wasn't even wasn't talking to the mic after his initial question. It was just kind of oh. weird. Oh, you can weird hear him. sound bite. So I just I just cut from there to the next question. But Scott Proctor yeah. was a hot topic at the event. Boone loves that shit, though. He, he did he love it. He doesn't care. He knows what he signed up for. He's a media man. He knows the deal with New York. He was he was kind of jazzed up by it. And he was jazzed up to announce that he was coming back on Talking Yanks. Yeah. Oh. I'm excited Sad too. voice. He was jazzed up. I didn't hear. I was peeing when you asked if we could announce it. So I didn't I didn't know if he was excited or not excited about it. But he does he does want to come back. There was like a Reddit th- a thread about like, I'm surprised he did it. 
It's like he loved it last year. Yeah. He loved like us playing the part of the f- upset fan and him playing the part of the manager who gets to be like, you're dumb. And yeah, I think <laughs> I also think there's there's people that, you know, go go check out our YouTube, subscribe. We're in a race with another channel. Um the top comments are all how awesome is Boone? And this is a guy that's coming off the worst season the Yankees have had in 30 years as their manager. So, yeah, he he likes chopping it up with the fellas. The crew was good there and he gave us a little bit of we got some things to chew on, Jim. Yeah. No, there were some stuff that like we've been debating and might have been debated that he kind of uh, gave us some decent insight to. One was Yogo. The nickname Yogo exists. Um, makes me think of Gogurt. <laughs> Yogurt on the go. But it's uh, Yoandrus Gomez. Yeah. Obviously. That was a fun one. That was my favorite maybe realization. Behind on a nickname. Bummed out about it. Yeah, he I that might have been him sneaky dunking on us. Think so? Because Yogo had one game last year. But what did he so say? So just to casually drop, you know. But they liked what they saw. A lot of our young arms. Luis Hill, Yogo. All right, two innings pitch, four strikeouts, no runs. They like what they see. They're a Venezuelan team. I love it. What did you like? I mean, you know, got insights into drawing up the lineup. Um, Soto batting two, Judge three, like Judge said, uh, DJ there. But he did say that the leadoff spot isn't, it's going to be kind of hot handish, platoonish. Like there's options that he likes, but Volpe's not one of them right now. Which, yeah. Which everyone knew. Yeah. That was, I, I think, slight, slight fan service at the end. Um, well, I was, every time we talk about it, someone comments like, why not Volpe? So I was, right. was dunking on that guy. Right. Fan service. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've kind of been in, we did our initial conversation and then this, our interview with Boone happened a couple days after the, uh, baseball writers awards where judge answering Boone's question, which some people might, might not know, uh, Said as long as as long as it's me, DJ Soto at the top, we'll figure it out. Um, that would pretty much mean DJ one, uh, Judge Soto, and that's where the debate starts to happen a little bit. Uh, for righty lefty, it's DJ Soto Judge. Um, I want to try that again. It, it's and I think it's where me and me and Big Aaron are are dreamers a little bit. If we get the good DJ, like we. We, we've seen it in spurts the past couple years. It hasn't been consistent. I think Booney kind of revealed what they're looking for, 350 on base and up. Like, he, he kind of alluded to that number to us. Um, and for me, I, I don't know. This is just... This is kind of dumb because I haven't watched Juan Soto a lot. But I, I like Soto in front of Judge because I think Soto's eye is slightly better. And I think Judge's contact bat is slightly better. Um, Juan Soto, Judge's career batting average is 282. Soto, I think he's 284. But a lot of that is juiced by 2019. He hit 350, I think. 351. Uh, so since 2022, so the past two seasons of ball, Juan Soto's been 259 of 406 on base. Um, either way, when these guys are going to be getting kind of unreal protection, although Soto, I guess, had it a little bit in San Diego, right? Yeah. Uh, Judge wouldn't be getting protection there. Where, well, no, but he'd have a runner on base. Yes. Um, which, you know, that was kind of the goal for Judge for a little bit. So, and I mean, Judge's, Judge's batting average the past three seasons, 291, 402. So I don't know in my head, uh, you know. Both are awesome. I, I think it's trying to find the guy to lead off. When we were really in the weeds of the offseason, I was like, Verdu- if it's Verdugo against a righty, um, you know, I'm thinking about him having to pinch hit later in a game. Hey, the fact we're getting a daydream about any of this is awesome, and that was probably our favorite part of the Boone interview, the talks of him actually drawing lineups. Because that's that's fun. So what, what were the stats you said? I just want to put numbers to him because I think I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you, but you said Soto's better at not chasing. So I, 
the past two years, Aaron Judge is 294 batting average of 417 on base. Uh, the past two years, Soto, uh, and he was traded midway through, so that's a little whatever, but he's 259, 406. So he's led the National League in walks the past three years. Yeah, yeah, I have the chase percentage. That's what you're talking about? A little bit. I mean, just getting on base, I was talking about. Oh, because uh, Soto is crazy at not chasing. I mean, the MLB yes. average is 28%, and Soto is... His average is 16.9. Last year was 16.5. Now, Judge is below average at 19.6. So, it's just two guys that make you throw strikes. And then Judge's zone contact, so like, you know, if they are in front of each other and they're going to get pitches in the zone, is 72%. And... Soto's zone contact last year was 85%. So that bodes well for Soto being in front of Judge if you think he's going to not swing at balls right. and going to get more pitches in the zone. He makes contact with those. Yeah, 85% I guess, clip. I guess I've got a weird chicken in the egg situation of I have Soto getting on base more for Judge ahead of him. Yeah. I don't know. That's what it's I'm saying. Real, it's a really good problem to have. Well, so was, you like Soto in front of Judge, too. Well, I was giving numbers to back that up, yeah. So if Soto's hitting so in front of Judge, he's going to get more pitches in the zone. If he doesn't, he's just going to get on base for the that's walk. What, that's, if I he guess, does get pitches in the zone, he has a really good zone contact percentage. I guess he's that's what I'm alluding play. to. I, th- I think it's just more walks. Like I don't want Soto. I don't think if Judge is behind him, gets more pitches in the zone because he still wants Soto. Then I'd flip him. Cause that's yeah, that's what I was trying to get if, to. I think you're secretly saying the opposite thing. Well, I I like the opposite, but I thought these numbers would help support with the the no chasing, like a taking pitches, where Judge won't have protection. Yeah, I I would love for Judge to have the protection of Soto because I think he's a bigger home run threat on balls in the zone and and slugging balls in the zone. Yeah, I guess my how we're seeing it kind of opposite right now is like I. Both situations, both situations in our head lead to double walks, <laughs> which if both guys are walking, like I, I don't know. Yeah, unless, unless uh, Judge feels the pressure to chase, but they don't really chase. Right. But hey, maybe just rotate it until you figure it out. That's what they did with the M&M boys back in 1961. Oh. You know, you know at some point in the year, whichever way they start with those two, like at some point in the year, there'll be a week where they feel like the lineup needs a spark and they flip them and... Yeah, the yeah, biggest thing is year. it'll be easy Soto lefty and righty. So I think it'll be mostly early on. I think whoever's leading off dictates it, but I think both guys are going to want it to be steady. Judge has hit yeah. number two for a long time, and Soto has hit number three and requested to hit number three for a long time. So if we start out with Soto in front of Judge, it's very likely in my head that we both those guys are like, "Hey, can we just do what we've been doing?" Because if we if everyone agrees, it's a net positive to have right. both those guys back to back. They might just ask for the comfort. Yeah, yeah. Hey, pretty fun storyline. Yeah, pretty fun storyline for the New York Yankees. Uh, you know what's fun? Wearing deodorant. Oh, Mando. New to our talking Yanks fans, they they just joined up with us. Uh, and know what I like. You know, deodorant for years, they've just aimed for the pits. And for a good reason. There's a lot going on there. But guys get smell everywhere else. You want to know a little Jake secret? Armpits, and then I'm usually a swipe across the chest. Just a little bonus deodorant. Uh, and You go big circles, too. <laughs> big circles. Um, Mando, it's powerful stuff. Clinically proven to control odor everywhere. Um, and they're looking everywhere. Your pits, your package, feet... Back, knees, anywhere uh, that could be cr- producing some odor. Mando has got a solution for you. Can block body odor and control for up to 72 hours. So check out their starter pack. Comes with a stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, and free shipping. And that is with code YANKS at shopmando.com. You'll get $5 off. That equates to 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com. Use code YANKS. There's a link in the description. Take care of the stink. 
Take with care. Mando. Take care of that stink. Anything else? Efros is behind. Uh, we learned that from Booney. And um, well, we were talking about the left field. So Judge is going to play a lot of center field. I had a conversation while we were talking pictures. That taking was pictures. That was, was such a that was such a Jimmy situation. It was beautiful. What's that? So the people that were there, they came, they got pictures. But what we stumbled into, because there was a pretty long line, was 45 minutes with Boone. And Jimmy found his opportunity. Talking to Bo- I've got Boone isolated Yeah, for 45 minutes. I'm going for it. No mic. Like, give me the real stuff. So basically, I saw that. I locked in and greeted people because they were really excited to see us. But I'm the stuff I'm hearing in my left ear, it's like, oh, Gary Sanchez 2018. Like, you were giving him the whole gambit. Well, he loves, he likes talking he ball. He likes like to he, talk ball. He, he brought some of it up to me. Like, he was going back and forth. He likes asking, like, what we think and shit. Uh, but I was... Off mic. Like, he's consistently done that with us. Yes. Uh, but, I, um, yeah, I made the joke, like, uh, about Gary catching the Cy Young pitcher. And he was like, oh, Gary's good. I said, yeah, you guys gave him too many c- catching coaches. Uh, and then he said something about that. He's like, no, I always loved Gary. He said, Gary put in a lot more work than people thought with his pitch calling. Like he was always a good pitch caller. And then we were talking about the outfield. And I was like, I said, is judge, judge going to play, uh, judge really going to play in left. Right. And he was like, yeah, he's done it. I said, no, he hasn't. Yeah. I was, I was in that conversation. He was like, yeah, you know, judge probably a little bit of left field. He's, he's done it. And we're like, like, I was like, no, okay. he hasn't. He's like, he did spring game. training like twice. That's what, but Boone knew, like sheepishly was like, uh, one game, the, one game last year, spring training. Oh, you know, mm. the big Boone smile came on because he went, eh, the all star game. Yeah. The, and then he said, yeah, the all star game. Get yeah. that out of Dude, here. So, Get um, that out of here. My read is Judge doesn't want to play left. Yeah. I, I don't. Here's my only thing, because there's because Boone, the way Boone was talking about it, it's not happening. There's a lot of there's a lot of data for that, but I guess where I lean, it's a Yankees thing, is because they fought about putting Judge in center for so long. Like Judge told the org, "I'm a center fielder. I'm a center fielder. I play center." They fought that as long as they could, and then when it was finally time to go, it was like, "Oh shoot, he, you know." I get why they put him in, in right, but he could play center. Like, I, I think the Yankees have fought the left field thing, and I, I still think it's just coming off the, like, Brett Gardner era. But, I mean, what they did last year is a whole nother crime to our left field situation. So, I don't know. I don't know either. But it was fun chatting. What else did we chat about while we were online? That, how they should have fucking won that wild card game. Oh, that's because we were talking about Gary, and he goes, you know, he hit a ball at game four. should have been a home run off Kimbrell. And I said, well, if you were in Fenway, you would have won. And if you were at the wild card game in the Bronx, Stan would have hit some homers. And he was like, you know, you can't do that. And I was like, you guys knew of all these pitches too. And he's like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know that stuff. Talking Yanks real ones. No, I, I admit it every about 200 episodes. I think about that Gary swing a lot. I think about that Gary swing a lot. Yeah, that would have changed the tone. It didn't. Yankees, it didn't. go win something. Go to a World Series. How about that? Uh, what else we got? Otani was a factor in Yamamoto. Whatever. We got some Luizaga stretched out news. You into that? No. Okay. <laughs> we need uh, seven, eight, nine guys. Right. Unless they want him to be the, like it's Hamilton, Canely, Holmes are the three when they're all healthy. They're the seven, eight, nine. And Loisaga is the, you know, eight, nine or seven, eight, like what they did with King last year. If that's what they mean, I, that dynamic kind of worked because the off days were, okay, King gets two. But, and, and I should say, there's no harm in like trying stretching Loisaga out in spring. I hope, but and, we and does this even count as stretching out? Like they're they're saying he can go two innings. 
Well, I didn't read the, the full quote. Up. I read the Mike King treatment from last year. They turned Mike King into a starter. Yes, my, I think they, they were Mike referencing King as the bullpen guy. As like he Who can said get it? Five outs in the bullpen. Matt Blake. Talking Yanks listener, Matt Blake. Johnny's not becoming a starter. No, I, and I know that, but um, that's the role then. So then they, then they must really like Hamilton, which we know they do. They do like Hamilton. I think the other thing that <clears throat> should be pointed out, I mean, Johnny Luizaga in 2022 had 11 multi-inning appearances. Um, you know, chunk of those are 1.1ers, but uh, that kind of wasn't on the table last year because he was banged up. He's appeared in more than... 50 innings once in his career. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm currently, I'm in a tricky spot because I'm counteracting two of my statements. I'm currently not pleased with the state of the bullpen, but it's also the place that I said, if the Yankees do have anything to stand on, it's Matt Blake and what they've done back there. So, you know they're going to tap into someone and we're probably still going to get a little something. You know, I know Yankee fans are calling for the Keenan Middleton reunion. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know, man. That The bullpen is a injury away from being, like, scary. Well, who's Hamilton this year? I mean, they picked up Matt Gage. If he has a good spring... Maybe he cracks it. Uh, they picked up Cody Morris. Um, we might find out when we get that when we get that graphic on the first day of spring. Nick Birdie's got a non-roster mm. invitee. Uh, Yeri De Los Santos non-roster invitee. Dwayne Underwood Jr. Dennis Santana. All of those guys are non-roster invitees that they picked up. Um, who was? Who else was it? Last year, Jimmy Norwood. <laughs> there was I a think. Norwood in spring. Remember, they they had like Jimmy's his name. We did know. a lot of Norwood. James. We did a lot of Crook. Um, Crook's a somewhat a real prospect. Yeah, like it, like he's been talked about in the organization. No, they need like, like a Licky like Hamilton out of baseball, out of but like lighting up the charts yeah. somewhere, and then they invite him to spring training. I would guess they haven't announced that move yet, and we get it on on that graphic. I don't know. I I I don't know if they're going to bring in another reliever. Um, they may. I'm not. But I would I would just coin flip it. And nothing that's going to be crazy. Max like before spring is guaranteed. Uh, Max was saying the spot. like uh, Middleton. Is this is this Johnny Clay and Tommy's last years? Johnny Clay and Tommy are all walking or all become free agents following this season. Yeah, I, I think a, a, I, a lot of Yankees fans, especially people that don't listen to us, don't listen to podcasts, and like or don't think about the Yankees in their downtime, don't really know that this is a walk year Yanks. Like this, like this is a like it might affect the trade deadline in a way. They are losing forty percent hmm. of their twenty five man roster. After this year, if they if they without if they don't bring him back, yeah, I I mean a chunk of that's bullpen because it's the the three guys we're looking at: Verdugo, Glaber, Soto, Canely, uh, Rizzo, Weaver. If they want, like if they want to get off money, they they have a lot. Yeah, I guess I in my head, I think if we're being honest, there's a Soto asterisk because I I think we believe that. They brought in Juan Soto with the intention of extending him. I do not. You don't think so? You've you said think that they, a lot. You think you don't think they have the intention of extending Juan Soto? Well, re-signing him in free agency. re-signing him in free agency. I think they're going to try, but e- extending okay, extending's the. I don't think an extension's on. Oh, the I I mean as I know free that's agency. what you mean. Yeah, I, I think they're going to try to sign him. Okay, but I don't think it's a given. I don't think we have any leg up over any other team. It would be the biggest egg on their face in a long time. Not if they win this year. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think they want him to be a, but I don't, I'm not. Okay. It's not guaranteed. I mean, it's not, it's, we've it's just not, said it a lot on this show. Like, you have. They, they wanted Judge. They wanted Cole. They got them. They want Soto. I don't know if they want Soto at any price. 
Because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be more than Judge. Yeah, I mean, they, they even brought on Rodon as Judge's caddy for when they re-signed Judge. Like, they... In their heads, they've re-signed one, so... Verdugo's a gun I, for I hire. Think... Glaber's been out three years ago. Both yeah, but, the guys are good. But other guys. teams, they just got beat on Yamamoto, and they were really wanted him. Right. So they can get beat on But that's because they went for Soto. Yeah. They got Soto with the intention to pursue keeping him long term. But Yes, and they traded all their yeah. pitching because they thought there was no way they were going to lose out on Yamamoto, and then they did. Yes, yes. So they can lose out on Soto about, is what they, I'm saying. They can. I think we're talking about a couple different yeah. angles on it. i just not penciling Soto into next year yet. No, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. Soto could hate it. You can not like New York. You don't have a chance. He's going to love it. I think he's going to love it. It's going to be the best. <laughs> um, but there's no other relievers out there that are like... It is double-edged sword because the bullpen's kind of thin and really are these the lockdown guys, but then also, okay, but we do believe in Matt Blake to go turn someone into someone. Right. It would be nice peace of mind to have to have one more guy that day one we know can pitch an eighth inning, but they do sort of have the trust there. Like, on the whole, this will be okay. Go get some of those Royals relievers from a couple of years ago and just, like, reignite their abilities and passion with Matt Blake mm-hmm. coaching. Tap Matt, in. I don't know if they have those guys anymore. Remember, like, two years ago, three years ago, the Royals had, like, four guys that were, like, their, their stuff was electric. Do they still have the Stomont? Is he good anymore? He has the ability. To I think good. they all had time where they ended up being bad. So that, but I'm, I'm saying that's just Royals effect. Right. I think they're just on different teams now. Is the problem? Damn. Uh, Stomont's still on the Royals. No, he's on the Twins now. Oh man. Damn. Stomont. And yes, he's been bad the last two seasons. But when he was good, those couple of years, it was like awesome. So cool. Greg Allen's back. Yes. So that's cool. No real room for him. Greg Allen's back, man. Outfields. He's a straight up minor league deal. I don't know. (laughs) Opt out situation. Like, can he just leave if he doesn't make the team? Or do they want him to be the AAA center fielder? Because they kind of just need one. I would guess there's like a, you know, a I think May no first opt guy. out. Don't they usually do those for those guys? You know, if you can find another opportunity. If, if you have a certain amount of service time, which I don't know if Allen has. How about you this? Can do it. You I'd, like are guaranteed that date. I would bet that they tapped into some, some rule we don't even know about. Remember the Greg Allen trade last year where they like pressed a you have to make this trade button? That's the deal the I'm talking out. about. Right. That's the opt out. If another team is offering you. Right. Yeah. So I'm guessing Allen's agent put that in the contract. But it wasn't even a traditional opt out because didn't they have to trade for him? Yeah. Yeah. It was like if, right. an, if a team. Because Matt Carpenter just opted out hey, yeah, 30 yeah. days in. It's I'm not like, on another team. Yeah. It was like if a team comes a calling. Like I think that was the Yankees just twisting a knife. I think they wanted to try something out. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it was like a, was Red a Red Sox, Sox you either deal. lose him for nothing right. tomorrow or you can get literally something from us today. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's on the 40 man that is expendable right now? We got guys. Augustine Ramirez. Who's Dominic- Jorbit Vivas? How many you need He's the guy move? they got with with Victor Gonzalez. He's kind of a real prospect. Jorbit uh, Vivas, Viv- the- another Venezuelan. Matt Gage. Dominguez on the first day they of just got training can go on the 60-day. They had just gotten They're Diego doing that Castillo now. again. That's like their new they thing. They'll cut, guys. Matt Gage. He's from, oh, he we went to Siena College. How about that? Yeah, local New York guy. His baseball reference is a fun look. Cause oh, man, he's got such an Astros beard. Augustin Ramirez and Carlos Norvaez behind the dish. They just signed a couple more minor league like catchers, too, so they might be preparing to part with one of those. <laughs> Matt I mean, Crook. that's too many catchers on the 40-man. Yeah, 40-man's yeah, got wiggle. There's, Cody there's Petit. A lot of, there's a lot of 40-man. It's kind of there's, an al- there's always cash in the banana stand situation. There's yeah. always Yogo. wiggle on the 40. Don't. 
day day one of spring training, Dominguez can go on the sixty day. So that that's the easy one in two weeks. Pereira. Any any given guy they can trade because they just want the forty man spot. See if you get out of him before you uh, floriole him. Hmm. No way. No? If someone comes asking, offering something? Oh, someone offers something. That's what I mean. If someone offers something, you, you Yankees, know. Yankees have yes. already decided to floriole him. <laughs> I know. I feel bad about it. Yeah. There's a lot of factors involved with floriole. There's a lot of factors involved... Everywhere we look. Actually, it's been the most said word around the office this week, factor. I'm hungry, and I, I said I'm going to eat one today if we have them. They're there. Maybe there's still, there's still a couple. Shoot, it's 2 out. o'clock. I haven't eaten anything. Factor in the fridge. Factor in your life. They're ready to eat meals. Make every day easier. Whether, wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. 35 different options a week. Keto, calorie smart, vegan, and more. Uh, they're also partners with us in our vlog. Uh, I eat one, I, I'd say, like once a month in the vlog. So if you want to watch me eating factor, you can do that. That's what you're into. Uh, flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Um, and we have a, I know panic went through a stretch. You're thinking about making this your lunch. A lot of factor talk in the office this week. Head to factormeals.com slash yanks 50. Use code yanks 50. Get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while your subscription is active. That's code yanks 50 at factormeals.com slash yanks 50. Well, another update for the people. Yeah. If uh, you're still listening to this episode right now on February 1st, tonight, Jake and I meet in the championship game of our Warehouse Games tournament for all of the marbles. Unfortunately, BBD's team, not due to him, who performed really well, lost in the semifinal. Damn. I snuck the compliment in there. He well, played nice really well. It was did. Yeah. Bomb play champ. Yeah. Walked away happy with my tournament. And there's a third a, place game. Too. Oh, you are playing in the third place game. So you can watch which is tonight. maybe the craziest hmm. game we will ever air. I forgot. That's going to get the people. And you on. and I are on mic for that. We're on commentary for that one. So tune in at six o'clock tonight. Uh, if you want to watch it live, the live chat's really fun. Which one of these lefties? Pops up on the spring training invite list. Don't say Brad Hand. Scott Alexander. Remember when he had the uh, nine strike inning or whatever? Brad Hand. Asked nicely. Aaron Loop. Jason Shreve. Dick Blyer. Amir Garrett. Shreve and Blyer have an invite. Open invite. Because I think they... They've been told... Any ex-Yankee... The Yankees love treating them right. You know, you want to get some reps in. You want other scouts to see you. I think they do that. Um, do you know I ran into a fun fact about Chase and Shreve? What's that? He, so when I did the pitch con um, thing with Pitcher's List, uh, I was listening to the segment before I came on, and um, – Alex was talking about how he was like, well, that's a splitter. Uh, not a lot of lefties throw splitters. I don't even know. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So I went to my the computer and I was like, what, how many lefties threw splitters last year? And there's only one pitcher that threw a splitter. That's uh, a lefty more than 10% of the time. Like Chapman throws his splitter, but it's 7% of the time. So it's not really anything. Uh, Chase and Shreve, the lefty that throws a splitter, 40% of the time. It's most thrown pitch. The only one in the league last year. That threw a uh, splitter. Interesting. People think it. This, people think the splitter is going to come back this year, even bigger. It kind of started to last year, but so there. Yeah, Chase Shreve. Shriever. He's got an invite. And Dick Blyer. Fifty big league innings last year for Chase, and or excuse me, fifty appearances. Yeah, that makes me happy. 
Me too. I was a little worried when Chase and Tree was on the Yankees, and I was like, lefty reliever, he's going to be in the league for a little bit. And then I just kind of had a moment of like, oh. But, yeah, every every year. But his, remember he stands like with his back to the... Remember that game he saved? He saved Chapman's <laughs> ass? Yeah. That was unreal. That was awesome. Is that the Chase and Tree movie scene? Should we watch that? Watch that would be a real fun, like, Talking Yanks watching episode. Just like the Chase and Shreve inning. We can do that. I'd really like that. Put that on the channel. Seven YouTube. years of service time for Chase and Shreve. That's awesome. 2018. Chase and Shreve. Where's the save? Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Come on. He's against the Mets. <laughs> yeah. Chapman came in. Walk, single, walk. They bring... And then walk. So he, Chapman walked in a run. Oh, and then he hit a guy. <laughs> <laughs> then Shriver comes in. No outs. Bases loaded. Uh, Two-run game. Talking Yanks watching. Coming up. Remember when AJ Cole saved a game? Sure do. Bases loaded. No outs. We were at that one. Fuck yeah. And King did it too. We, no were, at the, we were at the game when King did it too. King's good. Yeah. King, King, I know, King, but it's still King. bases loaded, no outs, right. save situation. Crazy. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.